Did you know that your heart is exactly like a vampire? They both need blood. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here, and today we're talking myocardial infarction, otherwise known as a heart attack. So before we get started, let's break down the word myocardial infarction. So myo, anytime you see this in anatomy physiology, you know that this means muscle. And cardial or cardio always refers to the heart. And then infarction, that kind of sounds like the word infraction, right? So if you have an infraction in sports, you're kind of getting in the way. And this is similar to this definition. It means a blockage or a lack of blood flow to an area. So if we put all this together, we see a lack of blood flow to the heart muscle itself. Well, why is that a problem in the first place? Well, if you look on here, here's your heart. It's a pump, right? So your heart is constantly contracting, contracting, pumping blood all throughout the body. And the way it pumps is the muscles inside the heart will contract. So if you look at these cells in here, we will see a bunch of these cells that look like this. They're all striated. They have got these stripes and they're spiral. So we see these cells right here, and what the cells do in order to contract is they're almost played like an accordion, right? All of these little striated parts of the cells actually come together closer, right? And as they do that, the heart spins and contracts and pumps blood out of itself. Well, how does it get the energy to do that? Well, the energy comes from what is in the blood itself. So these muscle cells are crying for blood because they primarily need two things, glucose and oxygen. These two suckers combine together to make the very important molecule ATP. If you haven't heard about ATP, I recommend you watch this video on ATP really fast. But this ATP directly powers the muscle cells to contract. So think about it. If we have a blockage or a lack of blood flow to the heart muscle itself, these muscles are going to get starved out of their energy source. And if they get starved out of their energy source for too long, they will end up dying. And that is what a heart attack is. The lack of blood flow to the heart muscle itself leading to cell death in the heart muscle tissue. Now the question is, how does this happen? And then what are some risk factors associated with it? Well, let's talk about it. The way your heart is fed blood supply is through what's called the coronary artery system. Now if you break the word down again, corona refers to crown. Because if you look at the heart, there are some vessels kind of crowning the heart kind of like this, right? That's what the coronary arteries are. So things like this, this, and this. Now arteries are blood vessels that carry blood technically after the heart pumps away from the heart itself. Now this is where it gets interesting. Normally when the heart beats, it'll pump through two main vessels, one being the aorta. This guy delivers oxygenated blood to the body tissues so that their cells can survive as well. The blood that rushes through the aorta comes from this left ventricle here, this side right here. So he's gonna pump and he's gonna go through this aorta pumping oxygenated blood to the body. And then the right side over here, the right ventricle muscle is going to contract and pump blood through the pulmonary system to go to the lungs. If you haven't gone over to cardiovascular system, I definitely recommend you watch this video on my cardiovascular system quick before you continue on with this one. But if we only have this tract going to all the body tissues and this tract going to the lungs, then where do these guys come from? Well, you can see that they're going to come from the aorta itself. So in fact, this guy over here is behind that pulmonary artery. And this coronary artery is branching right off from the aorta itself. So it's as if there's this big, big, big interstate going to most parts of the body, but then there's two tiny little tributaries, kind of off-roads, right, that are going to branch out and feed the heart muscle itself. Very, very important. When your heart is normally functioning and you've got just fine coronary vessels, the blood is going to pass down these arteries and a whole bunch of branches, feed the heart muscle tissue, they'll be happy, they won't die, and your heart will be pumping just fine. So the blockage then, if we're having a heart attack, comes from a blockage of the coronary arteries. So if we were to look inside of, say, this guy right here, this is what we could potentially see. So in a healthy artery, the walls of the arteries will be very clean. There will be plenty of space inside for the blood to travel through. Now, what happens during a heart attack is this blood vessel will become occluded or blocked. And these blockages are caused by plaques, which will have a variety of pathologies, which we'll talk about here in a bit of how they actually come about. But just know that there's some sort of fatty plaque that's building up in those arteries, right? And if they build up completely, completely blocking the blood flow, if the blood is, for example, flowing this way, the blood will be blocked. And everything downstream will no longer be receiving blood and that heart tissue will die. Now, I zoomed in specifically on a very, very important artery called the left anterior descending artery otherwise known as the LAD. Now, why is it called that? Because it's descending on the left side of the heart anteriorly, so on the front of the heart. So it would basically be coming in the front side. Now, what part is this blood supply feeding? 
Well, this blood supply is directly feeding the left ventricle. And I started this video talking about how the left ventricle's job is to pump blood to the entire body, including your brain, including your organs, including every part of your body, except for the heart and the lungs. Why would that be an issue if this heart muscle stopped getting the blood supply? Well, now the left ventricle's muscles are going to start dying. If they start dying, they can't contract. If they can't contract, blood doesn't get to those parts of the body, and those parts of the body, especially the brain and the internal organs, begin to die. That's why a heart attack can be fatal. And that's one reason some cheeky doctor called this artery the Widowmaker, because he kept seeing males coming in with these heart attacks, and they were passing away, making widows of their wives. Very morbid, which some anatomists are. And that's the most common cause of a myocardial infarction, is some sort of block, a plaque, in that left anterior descending artery. Now it could happen in other ones, so there's a circumflex artery here, there's the right coronary artery here feeding the right side of the heart, but the most common for some reason is that LAD. So the question is, who's at risk for this and how does it develop? So let's talk about those over here. Number one risk factor I'm going to say is high LDL. Now LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. It's the way that your body sometimes carries cholesterol, which is a fat. And a lot of the times the LDL gets kind of sticky, right? And that LDL can begin to develop on the inside of the artery walls. Now luckily, we also have another way to carry cholesterol called high density lipoprotein, otherwise known as HDL. And that helps scrub some of that plaque away and cleans it out and basically carries it elsewhere. So if you think about it, if you have too much LDL, and interestingly, to low HDL, high density lipoprotein, you could be at risk for building up these plaques and potentially having a heart attack. Second risk factor is hypertension. Otherwise known as high blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure, there's a lot of pressure pushing out on these artery walls, right? And so the more you press on those arteries, the more they have to stretch. And the more they stretch, sometimes they can get damaged. And what's interesting is sometimes when they get damaged, we can form some plaques because your arteries are almost thinking like, oh, we're healing themselves, right? Not only that, but there could be tiny little platelets those little clotting parts of your bloodstream that help clot whenever blood vessels uh, rupture. So if you're constantly pressing those arteries, you could accumulate some platelets, which is also dangerous because let's see what happens if you're developing a plaque, but the plaque bursts. So here I have a plaque that was developing and then a little bit actually broke off. Well, what's really trippy is that first off can travel and get a clot somewhere else, and that's bad. But secondly, the platelets that normally clot breakages in blood vessels will begin accumulating in that spot. And as they travel to that spot, we could actually accumulate a bigger and bigger and bigger plaque in that region, potentially ending up in a complete blockage of the blood supply. So what's dangerous is these plaques that are kind of loosey-goosey, they like to break apart a lot because all those platelets will accumulate, block it up, and that is a bad thing. That's why hypertension is a risk factor for heart attacks. Third thing, smoking. Smoking deals with basically every part of your body, including your lungs. Whenever you get toxins into your bloodstream that aren't supposed to be there from smoking, they could travel to arteries and cause damage. And not only that, but smoking impairs your oxygen content in general. You can't get as much oxygen in, so you're not feeding these muscle cells as properly as they should be. Next thing, low physical activity. What's interesting is when you exercise, especially aerobic or cardiovascular exercise, you're training these muscles of your heart to work well under stress, right? This sort of stress release cycle. So as you stress them out, they get stronger, more efficient. Therefore, what happens is if you do work out, your heart rate, okay, the rate at which your heart beats every minute will actually lower. Whereas if you don't work out, you're actually going to have an increased resting heart rate. Now, what does that have to do with heart attacks? Well, what's interesting is the way we feed the blood to the heart muscle tissue itself occurs when the heart is relaxing. So for example, when the heart beats, we're not feeding the heart muscle tissue, but when it relaxes, we are. So think about a person whose heart rate is low versus a heart rate is high. Who is feeding their heart more often? The one that beats like this, boom, 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 or the one that beats like this, boom, 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 boom. Who has more rest time to feed the heart? The one who has worked out their heart. So this helps feed the heart muscle to give the heart more time to relax and feed itself through the coronary blood supply. Last two, obesity. You see, if you're obese, you actually have more blood in general, so a higher blood volume, which could potentially increase blood pressure as well, leading to hypertension. So since you're putting a lot of force on those arteries, therefore, it's going to potentially damage them as well. Now, since we tied in number five to number two, I'm going to tie in number six to number one, which is diet. 
You see, how do you get high LDL in the first place? Well, LDL is a cholesterol base, right? And a lot of the times it spikes after you eat high cholesterol foods as well as high saturated fats. Now I saved the most interesting one for last. You see, all of these seem like things that we could control, right? With lifestyle changes, eating healthier, exercising more, not smoking, those types of things. But number seven is actually genetics. Which means if you have a family history of heart diseases, you will just have a higher risk factor of forming these plaques. So some people, through no fault of their own, they're doing all the right things, they're eating healthy and everything, they still could have this type of coronary artery disease, blockages in the coronaries, therefore potentially leading to heart attacks. So now we know how heart attacks work, but the question is, what do we do about it? What if somebody's having a heart attack and we need to fix them? Or better yet, what if we catch that they're about to have a heart attack? What can we do medically to intervene? Well, that's going to come in the next video here.